A giant living sword comes out of nowhere and crashes right into Star Road, shattering it into seven pieces. Without Star Road, the people's wishes can't come true anymore. Now, living weapons are appearing everywhere in the world and terrorizing the citizens. In order to stop this madness, I team up with unexpected allies and even with old foes in an epic quest to fix Star Road. This is how I found the seven mysterious star pieces, completed difficult challenges, and defeated a powerful super boss to 100% super Mario RPG. On a quiet day in the Mushroom Kingdom, the Koopa King Bowser appears in a clown car to kidnap Princess Peach. I immediately rush to Bowser's castle to save the princess. The corridors inside are guarded by armored Koopas, so I take them on. After crossing a collapsing bridge to get over a lava lake, I managed to reach Bowser's throne room. To my surprise, Peach is just hanging there with Bowser standing on a chandelier that's held up by some chain chomps. I jump on the other chandelier and challenge him to a fight. After a few jumps, Peach advises me to attack the chain instead. Bowser's attacks get more and more desperate, but eventually the chain chomp lets go and Bowser falls. It's all going pretty well until he throws a hammer and knocks my chandelier down too. Luckily, I jump off of Bowser and flap my arms back up to the chain. <laughs> Until out of nowhere, a sword appears in the sky. It splits a star, causing pieces of it to scatter, then pierces Bowser's castle. This makes me fly all the way to my house, hanging me on my coat hook. A toad comes inside to check on me, then I follow him outside. The toad asks me to save Princess Peach, so I immediately return to the castle despite the massive sword. The sword then talks to me, saying that the castle now belongs to the Smithy Gang before it causes the bridge to collapse. On my way to Mushroom Way, I bump into a toad who teaches me how to battle. Luckily, the Goombas are right there for me to practice my jumps. These new skills come in handy as Mushroom Way is overrun by Goombas, but I easily take care of them. Even the paratroopers are quickly taken care of, and I reach my first level up, then choose an upgrade to my physical attack. In the next area, poor Toad is being carried around by a paratrooper. <laughs> happening to you. I free a spinning flower from a Goomba, then use the flower as a launch pad to reach and rescue the kidnapped toad. The spikies in the next area are tough, and despite my best attempts, I can't reach the Lakitu that's flying around. I find Toad in trouble again, this time being bullied by a hammer bro and his friend. They try to hit me with their hammers and hurt quite a bit, but after trading a few blows, they go down. Hey, where does hammer come from? Are you, are you, are, do you have the memory of a goldfish toad? Where did this hammer come from? Totally not from the hammer bro that I just beat the crap out of. Toad brings me one of their hammers and we head to Mushroom Kingdom together. The toads seem nervous about Princess Peach being kidnapped by Bowser again. Hey Mario, my brother's waiting for you upstairs. <sighs> He's waiting for me upstairs by jumping on the bed over and over again. One, two, three. Think I practice and I'm gonna jump beside you, Mario? Sure. Yeah. Wait, is he jumping even faster? <laughs> After talking to the villagers, I head to the shop, then buy a shirt and a pin that prevents poison damage. I then find an old lady in the basement. I order you to stand before me. What? I now order you to jump. Why am I letting this lady tell me what to do? Oh! Okay, listen to old women do whatever they say. In this world, there are things called hidden treasures. Use your awesome jumping ability to look for them. This should help too. Don't forget to equip it if you're hunting for hidden treasures. I take a break at the inn before entering the castle. I meet the chancellor and explain to him what happened with wild gestures. The chancellor gets even more worried about the princess's safety now and asks me to save her. You can buy armor and accessories and item shops. Now then, take care. Mario. <laughs> Forgive me, but I can't stop worrying about the princess. Go to the cellar and prepare for your journey. The vault guard shall assist you. I take the treasures from the kingdom's vault, which turn out to be surprisingly cheap. When I leave, some cloud person is chasing a purple crocodile thief. <laughs> nice jump. Boo! I can't cry. Big boys don't cry, but it's just not fair. Wait, if you cry at storms, what am I gonna do? Stop crying, stop crying, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm gonna help, please, stop! The cloud boy called Mallow claims he's a frog and suggests catching the thief together. I agree, and we head out together to retrieve his precious stolen coin. Har har, you smugs never catch me. A snail can outrun you morons. Later, I swear, if he runs right past, you guys suck. We chase him to Bandit's way and clear some enemies after 
after using Mallow's ability to learn about their weaknesses. After another level up, I pick up the fireball power. On my way through the next area, I discover a new type of enemy, some kind of robotic dog called Canine. After a few more battles, Mallow levels up and learns HP Rain. I try out his Thunderbolt and learn about exploiting the enemy's weaknesses as the thunder deals massive damage to the frogogs. Using the spinning flowers as launch pad lets me find a hidden treasure. But the Croco chase continues. He keeps running with his loot, but despite his big talk, we manage to corner him. Croco plays one more trick on us and pretends to give the coin back peacefully, but then attacks us. Mallow reads his mind to figure out his weaknesses and his confident thoughts. I use a fireball to exploit his weakness and set his tail on fire. Yowch! Once his tail stops burning, he pulls a bomb out of his bag and throws it at me, but luckily he misses. Give me back my coin or I'll belt you again. <laughs> oh, ouch! I'm gonna pay you back in spades, kid. Oh, go on, take back your grubby old coin. Adios, amigos. Croco also drops someone's wallet, then Mallow and I go back to the Mushroom Kingdom. Back at the Mushroom Kingdom, we find some Shy Guys on pogo sticks tormenting the citizens. I defeat several Shy Guys to rescue the nearby toads, then return the wallet stolen by Croco to a citizen before following the endless stream of Shy Guys into the castle. There are even more of them causing mayhem inside. After clearing most of the Shy Guys, I make it to the Chancellor's room. I find the leader of the pogo stick Shy Guys there, some guy on a bouncing sword. I use the Stargust special attack to clear his minions right away, and thanks to Mallow, I learned that that he's weak to lightning. Mallow uses his Thunderbolt, which deals a ton of damage and stuns him briefly. After an intense battle, Mallow and I manage to take one of the star pieces back from him. The remaining Shy Guys decide to warn their boss, then run away. I find the Chancellor shaking in the corner of the room, but the Toads are relieved to see him safe. Mallow suggests that we go ask his grandpa for help, and thus we leave for Tadpole Pond. On the way, we stop by the shop to exchange the frog coin for a cricket pie that Mallow's grandpa wanted. <laughs> Together, we take a pipe that leads to the Karo sewers, and Mallow warns me of someone called Balome. The underground path is pretty dark and partially flooded. The cheap cheeps there are easily taken care of, though, with Mallow's thunderbolts. A pipe leads deeper inside, and we find new enemies. Rats with gloves called Rat Funk, and a ghost-like enemy called Shadow. I try to grab a treasure chest, but suddenly it jumps at me. It turns out to be a mimic called Ha huh What, and inflicts fear on me, which causes me to do less damage, but take more damage. There are no pushover, but eventually I win and head deeper into the maze. Another spooky enemy called Hobgoblin attacks us and sings an elegy which inflicts the mute status on Mallow, stopping him from using any specials. Then I even run into some booze, but I just breeze through with an invincibility star. After running around in the maze for a while, I reach a room with even more booze. The fight gets really intense when the boo and shadow inflict fear on both of us, followed by the shadow taking out Mallow in a single hit. After barely making it through the battle, I heal up and jump on a green switch to drain the water. I check out another pipe and find a sleeping yellow dog there. This was me, Balloon. Is that a fire hose or his tongue? What the heck makes you think that's a fire hose? Whoa! Ah, it's a snark attack and you're it! Alright, bring it, fatty. Stop licking me! What the heck is that tongue made of? Is it like an acid tongue? Why does it hurt so much? Stick for a body. Head full of straw. Give me a scarecrow. Rah, rah, rah! What? <gasps> In this state, the only attacks I can use are specials. C can't stand it. The hunger. The hunger. Don't eat him. Ah! I need I need I need you spit him out right now! Spit him out I need you! You think you've won, huh? Little did you know. I'm all that stopping a flood of water. So long, Sokies. Sokies. <laughs> Oh, that was scary. Below must have been lying when he said water would come gushing out of here. Er, uh, Mario, do you hear something or is it just me? Water, here it comes. We need to switch it back before we're washed away. Did you just jump on his head? What is Mario doing? How did you fall off the button? What? But, but, what? The, but, but, Mallow, you had one job! How did you fall off the button? There are several pads leading down, and I check out some of the flooded tunnels on my way. Just when the worst part is over, I jump on a barrel and ride it until I find a safe spot to land. That one's gonna bite the butt. That one's gonna bite the butt. That one's gonna bite the butt. No, no bite butt. No, no, no. The amount of fish teeth marks on my butt. Oh, hi. I didn't collect enough coins in the minigame to trade for a frog coin, but the toad still gives me a free Koopa shell that I immediately equip as a weapon. I leave, and a bit further towards the pond, we meet a friendly tadpole who seems to already know me before a group of tadpoles come to check me out. They do say you can jump better than a froggy. I wonder if it's only a rumor. 
The frog sage then appears. He's being carried by a Lakitu, ready to give me advice. But before that, I meet some tadpoles who align like musical notes, but a composer called Todovsky thinks what I played is not the right melody. I talk to a tadpole who shares with me the notes of a song that Todovsky likes. I play the tadpole song correctly this time, and finally the composer approves, then gives me an alto card as a reward. A bit further down, I find tadpole shops and they let me trade frog coins for consumables. At this point, I jump across the tadpole bridge to talk to the frog sage. He shares his knowledge with me and reveals that Peach is no longer in the castle. Then, he tells me about Smithy and his gang, which includes Clay Morton, who he defeated at the Mushroom Kingdom. Mallow asks him about the star that we found, and the sage thinks that those might become important in the fight against Smithy. Apparently, they have the power to grant wishes. Although Mallow thinks he isn't ready for it, the sage decides that he should join me for the rest of my journey. Finally, the sage explains to Mallow that he's not a tadpole, which somehow seems to be a massive surprise for everyone. He explains how Mallow was dropped from the sky in a basket and decided to take care of him. Despite learning all of this, Mallow agrees to help me out and to find his real family. The sage says that we should head to Rose Town next as the people there will need our help. I deliver the cricket pie before we head out and the sage gives me a weapon for Mallow as a reward. I ride some moving platforms to get across the water. Enemies called Star Slap attack me there, but they go down pretty quickly. From there, I reach a path with some shy guys swinging on more moving platforms. They also seem to get help from an enemy called Snapdragon and even put me to sleep with their songs. Another enemy called Crook attacks me nearby, but runs away before I can defeat him. After collecting all the coins using the platforms, I finally make it over the pond. Some shy guys joined by a huge spider called Arachne wait for me on the next path. The Arachne can poison me, which turns out to be a lot of trouble as it eats away at my health each turn. After looting all the treasure chests, I move to the next area. To my surprise, I find none other than Bowser himself commanding a small army of his minions. He tries to take them somewhere over a bridge, but it's down, so he makes them move out to find another path. I enter Rose Town and see that some of the toads here seem to be completely paralyzed. Not only that, but since the shooting star fell into the forest, the toads seem to get barraged by arrows. In one of the houses, I find a young toad playing with Super Mario dolls. He calls his mom over and tries to figure out if it's really me or an imposter, but I decide to trick him and say no. He invites me anyway to play what he calls the Geno game. He tells me to play as Bowser while he chooses to play as Geno. He takes out his Geno doll, then attacks my Bowser doll. After my counterattack, he uses his doll to fire a stream of balls, but hits me instead of my doll, causing me to collapse onto the floor and lose consciousness. That night, some kind of mysterious light appears and enters the Geno doll. Suddenly, the doll comes to life, but stumbles as if it isn't used to walking with those legs. Geno leaves the house, then I recover from the ball smack and wake up in the bedroom. Now the kid claims that he saw the Geno puppet walk into the forest. I enter this town's shop through a chimney and buy some new clothes and healing items. There's also a house on a hill, which I can't reach, but luckily jumping off of a toad's head solves that issue. I loot a couple treasures inside, then press a green switch. This lets the toad reach his house, but he immediately asks me if his treasures are still fine. I tell him the truth, and luckily he forgives me for stealing his stuff. He even tells me a secret forest path to follow which should lead me to something nice. I leave Rose Town to investigate the forest maze. There are some wigglers and a mushroom enemy called Amanita. The wiggler attacks us with some kind of sandstorm attack, then starts to buff himself up. Mallow gets turned into a mushroom, but luckily we still manage to win. I jump into a tree stump, which leads to a cave. A new enemy called Thornet attacks me there and immediately poisons me. I take care of them, then encounter a weird flying enemy called Octolot. The Amanitas turn both Mallow and I into mushrooms. As mushrooms, we lose our turns, but regenerate health, leaving us no choice but to stall for a while. Eventually, we transform back into ourselves and defeat the enemies, then reach the surface again. Some kind of Donkey Kong-looking enemy called Gorilla attacks me there. Defeating it allows me to go deeper into the forest until I reach an area with a bunch of tree stumps. I explore the different caves and their hidden treasures. What pixel in this room have I not jumped in? How did I miss this thing so much? Holy crap! How? How? The last one has a wiggler inside that launches me back up. I end up at a familiar location, but can proceed deeper into the forest from here. At a crossroad, I see Gino who runs away to the right. But first, I take the path that the toad recommended and reach a secret tree stump. I loot a bunch of treasures, then follow Gino's path. It leads me to a weird looking guy called Bowyer, the culprit who is tormenting Rose Town by shooting arrows at the toads. He's literally a living bow, and his minions are arrows. One of them carries a star to the group, then right at that moment, Gino intervenes, demanding that they give the star 
Jar back before challenging them alone. But after dodging some arrows, we charge in to help him out. Bowyer gets really mad now and introduces new rules to the battle by placing down my buttons so he can lock them, stopping me from using that action. I try out Gino's laser, dealing good damage to the boss. He puts Gino to sleep and leaves me no choice but to use basic attacks. Then he switches things around and locks the attack button instead. I wake Gino with some cleansing juice and continue attacking with the allowed attacks until suddenly Bowyer decides to cheat and disables all of the buttons at once. Luckily, with a third party member, we're now able to use triple moves. Using the secret fourth button, we unleash the powerful Star Riders attack on him, ending the fight spectacularly. After the battle, I talk to Gino and he explains that he's a visitor from above who is borrowing the doll's body. He explains the Star Road, which is where wishes are transformed into stars. When a wish is granted, the star falls down to Earth as a shooting star. Unfortunately, the Big Sword destroyed Star Road, which means no more wishes can come true. We have to find all seven broken star pieces to repair Star Road so people can wish again. Since Gino's real name is hard for us to pronounce, he keeps the doll's name then hands the star piece over to me. Unfortunately, one of the minions was listening in on Gino's explanations and runs away to take the information to Smithy. I return to Rosetown to check on the toads and the kid seems excited to see Gino again. He wants to keep playing with his doll, but Gino explains that he can't. Together, we act out for him what happened to the Star Road, but it's not enough for the kid to understand. This, do you get it? Ah, <laughs> uh, nope, you lost me. <laughs> Gino then tells him that if he doesn't do something, nobody's wishes will be granted anymore. He says he saw something shiny fall down around Mulville and then gives me a weapon for Gino. From here, I then reach a place called the Pipe Vault. It leads me to a tunnel with only a thin bridge to cross over lava. On the stairs, I have to dodge a thwomp and also defend against some Goombas. I reach an exit pipe and come out to even more pipes and piranha plants. One of them leads to a room with lots of secret treasures where another has a mole that lets me play a Goomba thumping game. I have to jump on the Goombas but avoid the spike in order to get points. Thanks to a gold Goomba, I managed to reach the target points and get a flower tab. I keep playing for some frog coins and a flower jar that permanently raises my flower points. I take the last pipe and reach a tunnel that leads me to a couple of flower pots with piranha plants and munchers. I can't battle the munchers and instead lose coins if I touch them, so I have to carefully jump over them. After making it through, I reach the surface again and get to Yoster Island. Yoshi! Dang it, I can't jump on him. I want to ride a Yoshi. They make the cute Yoshi noises. They're so cute. There are a bunch of Yoshis here, and I shamelessly check their mailbox. Honeymoon reservations for two. Mushroom travel. Ooh, someone's getting married. Then I meet a blue Yoshi with sunglasses wearing no shoes like a rebel. The only Yoshi that talks to me is green Yoshi, though, and he welcomes me to the island. He asks for my help and lets me jump on his back so he can translate for me. We chat with a yellow Yoshi who says that Boshi is the fastest runner. Then a red Yoshi gives me cookies for a race against Boshi. Cookies! Yoshi ever! I don't want to ride mine anymore. This red one's better. I bring Boshi the cookie wager and he accepts my one-on-one -on -one challenge. Racing Boshi turns out to be pretty hard, but I can use the cookies to motivate Yoshi. More cookie! More! Eat a cookie! Go! Yes! I'm not gonna lie, the cookie's carried. <laughs> <laughs> wow, unbelievable. You just beat Boshi. That's right. You suck, Boshi. You suck. Yoshi is happy that I helped him beat Boshi and shares the Yoshi cookies with me so I can call for his help in battle. I head back to Rose Town to sleep, but when I wake up, I see someone in the other bed. Is that Link? What? <laughs> Hero of time, help me out here, man. I want him in my party. With that done, I leave Yoster Island and head to Mulville. I check out the inn first, then a girl tells me about Dinah and Might going to the mountains and that they might be trapped now because of the star. I keep exploring the village and find Bowser and his minions near the mountain. Bowser's army has been shrinking as his minions have been struggling against these new enemies, so he angrily shouts at his minions, then marches them out. Afterwards, I check out the town store and buy new weapons and work pants for everyone. Some of the other moles mention the star too and ask me to help out the citizens at the mountain. So I head into the nearby cave and find some more moles arguing there. They can't reach the entrance to the mines, but luckily by jumping on their heads, I can get there just fine. As I enter the mines, new enemies called magmites and clusters attack me. Then I have to deal with yet another group of enemies, the enigmas that look like a bunch of smaller monsters forming a bat, along with floating fireballs called lava bubbles. In the next room, I find a toad strolling around looking for rare items to sell. From here, I go north and find a large spring. I use it, but 
but bang my head against the ceiling, knocking me unconscious. Turns out it was a trap, and none other than Croco and his gang show up to rob me of my coins. Coins, beautiful coins, Cro Croco! Kill him now! No talking! More killing! Mario Croco is- I can see that! You're letting him get away! We almost corner him, but he pulls out one of his bombs to clear the way. I follow Croco from room to room, circling through the mines, but stop to beat his crooks. They carry some of my coins, so slowly I get my money back. While clearing the rooms, I reach level 10 and learn the super fireball move. Croco is still running circles through the mines, but eventually I manage to catch him and immediately punish him with our triple move and my new super fireball. He keeps stealing items from me and throwing spiky balls, but I keep zapping and frying him until he gives me my coins back and runs away, dropping a micro bomb too. After searching the mines a bit more, I find a dead end with a mole who explains that his kids are trapped behind the nearby wall. Using Croco's micro bomb, we blow up the wall, then proceed through the mine shafts using an invincibility star to take out a bunch of bob bombs. A shy guy in a minecart rams me back into the previous room, but at least he drops a frog coin before running off. Deeper inside, I find the source of all the bob bombs. A purple bomb guy is throwing them constantly, and I spot the crash star right above him. When I approach him from behind, he introduces himself as Punchinello and wants to fight. I start the battle with our triple move, dealing good damage right away. But then he summons four bob bombs, which definitely need to go down before they explode. Mallow's Thunderbolt destroys the bob bombs, but then Punchinello summons three mezzo bob bombs. They deal a lot of damage, but eventually the boss is done for and has to pull out his ace. Before we know what to do about it, the fuse gets lit. Somehow we survive the massive explosion and it clears the path forward and lets us reach the star at the same time. Now we have a total of three stars. I go through the hole and find Dinah and her little brother Might there trying to get away in a stuck minecart. I lift them both into the cart, then start pushing to go for a ride. I ride the tracks and try to avoid getting off the rails. There are a lot of coins and mushrooms to collect here, but navigating the sharp turns is not an easy task. What's I supposed to do there? I maybe had to slow down a lot. Okay, these sharp turns, you have to be going really slow. Eventually, the rails lead out of the mine, and I reach an actual roller coaster. The tracks end nowhere, though, and after flying through the air, I crash right into the house of the Mole family. The family reunites, and they thank me for helping them out, despite the new hole in their roof. When I leave their home, a beetle approaches me, followed by a group of gray shy guys called Sniffsters. They warn me not to touch the beetle, as it's a present for someone called Booster. They casually mention that Booster keeps a princess entertained, immediately making me think it might be Peach. The toad from the mines now has a store in town and sells me a lucky jewel for a hundred coins. I then head to Booster Pass, hoping to find the Sniffsters and Peach there. I fight a Lakitu with a weird vegetable enemy called Artichoker along with the Spikester there. Vegetable enemies keep showing up, but I fight them all off. At the end of the area, I find a stone gate and pass through to reach Booster Tower. There, I find Bowser saying he misses his fortress and the classic chaos with Peach and me before he starts crying. He calms himself down when he sees me, then turns back to his grumpy old self. Suddenly, Peach, who happens to be crying on top of this tower, hears us, then calls out to me. Bowser hears her, then leaves to his castle while we head for the tower's door. Unfortunately, the door to the tower is locked, but before we can figure out a solution, Bowser suddenly charges in, ramming the door into pieces with his shell. Proud of his accomplishment, he forces himself into our group with the excuse that he's making us his minions. Gino temporarily gets sidelined as I switch Bowser in and take him to Moleville to buy him some clothes. We return to Booster Tower and enter inside to find a Sniffster receptionist that greets me before attacking me. They're also joined by an enemy called Jester. This gives me an opportunity to try out Bowser's terrorize move, which amazingly inflicts the fear status on enemies, lowering their defense and attack. There are a bunch of portraits of some guys who are all called Booster, and then a similarly looking one suddenly escapes through a hallway. The room behind the reception has a bob on a seesaw, but I can't launch him high enough to do anything. The hallway leads me to a staircase, which lets me reach the next floor of the tower. Finally, Booster shows himself, approaching me while riding a toy train. He admits that he's holding Peach captive, and is very busy keeping her entertained. The next staircase is full of bob bombs, but clearing them at least lets Bowser level up. From here, I can jump down to land on the seesaw, launching the bob bomb high up for me to open the treasure chest there. It contains a new hammer, which will be a nice upgrade, but it unfortunately lands right on my head. Another room has a green switch, which, when pressed, seems to have changed something back in Booster Pass. In another room, I explore behind some curtains and suddenly transform into a 2D version of myself. Wait, why am I 2D classic? Mario, what happened to me? What I do? What I do? What? What just happened? 
The defenses get a little tougher, and the Sniffsters now use blasters shooting bullet bills at me. From here, I reach a corridor with a locked door and the same booster portraits from before, but this time I have to interact with them from oldest to youngest. Picking the wrong one immediately starts a battle, and since I don't remember the sequence from the first floor, I end up in several fights before guessing the right order and earning the key to the door. I unlock the door and enter inside to find a chain chomp, then Bowser asks me to look away while he handles her. Bowser then explains that she's been locked up as punishment for biting Booster, and she happily agrees to help us out to have her revenge. The chain chomp now acts as a weapon for Bowser. Using a thwomp to launch me, I enter a stairway high up in the tower. The room above has a lot of coins, but stepping on some of the tiles causes blue lava bubbles to attack me. They deal a lot of damage with their laser attacks, but Bowser tanks them easily. A locked room contains some zoom shoes. I give them to Gino to increase his already good speed even higher. Booster really doesn't seem to want anyone to get past the next stairway, as a bunch of chain chomps are waiting there. I make my way through, then reach a room where his toy train finally comes to a stop. He figures out that we're trying to take Peach away from him and starts throwing bob bombs at me. I manage to avoid their explosions by hiding behind a picture frame in the corner. That didn't do it. <laughs> Uh, no, you had a little safe room in the corner in case you don't know how your castle works. Well, so long. He's crying. Soon, I reach a room with a beetle cage and a toy box with a peach doll. Finally, we also find Peach on the tower's balcony, but the door to reach her is locked. I quickly hide behind the curtain to wait for Booster and his sniffsters to open the door. I have to wait while they practice their wedding ceremony. Wait, Mario always shows up about now to ruin the fun. We gotta take that into consideration, though. Someone go get the Mario doll. Uh-oh. It isn't here. Of course it's here. You lazy slobs couldn't find water if you were fish. It's behind those curtains. Number one, you go and look. Uh-oh. One after another, they search for the doll behind the curtains before Booster opens the last curtain and reveals me. Wait a minute. This is better than a party. Look out, because here I come. <gasps> no, 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 no. <laughs> what? That's not fair. Wait a second. It's right up there. I found the Mario doll. Wait, what? But we'll never be able to reach it up there. Oh, the sorrow. What am I going to do? I want to lose it. <laughs> I, I can get it for you. <laughs> Goodness, you're so kind. Thank you for getting my doll. Have you not realized who I am? I'd like to reward you. Here, take this. What the heck is going on? Booster's charm. May happiness follow you wherever you go. <laughs> All right, enough is enough. Cancel the rehearsal. We're going on with the show. Here's the password. Garo. Isn't that like my Switch username or something? How did you know that? I give the booster charm to Gino, then head through the door. Out of nowhere, we get attacked by a duo, Knife Guy and Great Guy. With Bowser in the party, it switches my triple move to shooting Star Shot, which showers both enemies and stars. Knife Guy then goes down quickly, to a super fireball. Terrorizing great guy to inflict the fear status makes him super weak and lets Gino and me deal a ton of damage. He puts Gino to sleep with the bubble, but Bowser then quickly takes him out with his pet chain chomp. After the battle, I jump off the tower and find Booster in the distance running away with Peach to take her to their wedding. Booster now makes me race him to the party, but rolling barrels in the Sniffsters make the race unnecessarily hard. Every successful jump onto a barrel or Sniffster brings me closer to Peach for a flower, boosting my maximum flower points, but every fail jump pushes me further back. Eventually, we reach the top where, to my surprise, I find a place called Marymore. Once there, I head for the hotel and find a shop where they sell an actual gun for Gino. I also buy a nurture ring which nobody can equip and doesn't seem to do anything but overflow with love. I then pay a whopping 200 coins for the suite, then follow the bellhop to my room, exploring for treasures along the way. Once we reach my room, I tip the toad, then take a shower and head to bed. I head to the ceremony where a bunch of toads have already assembled for their own wedding. I try to enter the cathedral, but Sniffsters have barricaded the door, so I take the back entrance instead. From there, I reach the kitchen and annoy the cooks by jumping onto the wedding cake. What? What? What are you doing? <laughs> Oh, that's nice. You just stepped on the- You fools! <laughs> a Sniffster then spots me and tries to warn Booster, but can't break through the door alone. The silly Sniffster asks me to join him so we can bust through the door together. After charging the door at the same time, we make it through, but then the Sniffster rushes past another door that then gets slammed in my face. I then try the same strategy with Bowser, and we manage to open yet another door by working together. Unfortunately, rushing in like this causes a chain reaction that makes Peach drop all her stuff, then she starts crying at the altar. What's this? Water coming from your your eyes? Are you leaking my <laughs> That sounds really sus, not gonna lie. Wait, are you drinking it? Tastes salty. He did not just say it tastes salty. Nintendo, if that's the same dialogue from like 15 or 20 years ago, the OG, you are sus. <laughs> Best life ever. <laughs> 
The Snipsters start picking up Peach's stuff, but her crown is still missing. My task is to find the crown before all the candles are lit. Eventually, I find it right on Booster's head and take it back from him. He accuses me of crushing his wedding, but Peach seems very relieved, although she immediately snarls at Bowser. Here's a kiss from my hero. Oh, isn't that great? You're gonna kiss him? But I'm the one who saved your skin. Me too. I want a reward. I'll take a kiss. Give me a kiss. <laughs> and you get a kiss, and you get a kiss, and you get a kiss. Everybody gets a kiss. Cutscene smooch, cutscene kiss, cutscene kiss. Yay! Feels like sandpaper. Wait, did you kiss him? What the? Bowser, did you kiss Booster? Just as we were about to head back to the Mushroom Kingdom, the chefs enter the room with a massive wedding cake. They seem so annoyed about us leaving the party that the chefs and the cake attack us. They all resist Bowser's terrorize, so I proceed to smash the cake with my hammer. Eventually, the chefs seem to suspect that the cake is moving, and attacking it further increases their suspicions. As the chefs run away, the candles on the cake are lighting up, and the cake really comes to life. I turn them off one by one while dealing with the cake's blizzard attacks. After taking enough damage, the cake is reduced down to a raspberry layer, and it now attacks me with a sandstorm. Once I damage the cake enough, the Snifsters and Booster join the battle, wanting to eat cake. Even though the cake still moves, the Snifsters toss it over to Booster, and he swallows it whole. They wrap up the wedding and walk away. Now Peach joins the party until we bring her back to the Mushroom Kingdom. When I walk out, the assembled toads approach me, happy that the creepy guy who took over their wedding is gone, and that they're now able to have their own ceremony. I join some toads for a wedding picture, then leave the area. This takes me straight back to the Mushroom Kingdom. I return to the Chancellor with Peach, but after a short moment of relief, they're all suddenly shocked when they see Bowser on my team. He's too embarrassed to tell the truth about why he needs to work together with me, so Mallow jumps in and clears the situation up. We demonstrate very enthusiastically how the sword impaled Bowser's keep, and that he can't get back there without getting rid of Smithy. Mallow and Gino explain their motivations too. Restoring the Star Road seems really important to Peach, and she wants to join us and help out more, but the Chancellor is completely against it, so she goes back to her room for now. Meanwhile, the Chancellor asks me to defeat Smithy. I go back to Peach's room to say goodbye, then leave the castle. But right when I exit, Peach calls out to me through the window. She floats down with her parasol and seems to have really made up her mind about helping me out on this adventure. Her plan is to sneak out like this without anyone noticing, and I agree to let her join. Since we don't have a lead about where to look for more star pieces, Mallow suggests returning to his grandpa and asking for help. Back at Tadpole Pond, the Frog Sage mentions that a star piece has been found at a place called Star Hill. Hmm, it does seem likely that a star piece would fall there. Yeah, yeah, exactly, you know, surely, surely a star piece will land on a place called Star Hill! I travel there and find some stargates that take me from one area to another by walking through the keyhole. Wait, I got numbed by a keyhole star! I don't think I should have done that. I didn't read this. What the heck just happened to me? Gino explains that transformed wishes from Star Road all land here. However, some wishes remain unfulfilled since Smithy destroyed Star Road. I listen to one of the wishes before I have to fight some geckos, trovers, and sackets. Sleep sauce? <laughs> Ugh! Don't squirt your sleep sauce on me. Mallory, you're a cloud! <laughs> he threw his bone at me. Another new enemy is the Pulsar, which attacks with strong electric abilities and then self-destructs. I hope my baby's cute. You wished for your baby to be cute, but your wish didn't work because the star road is broken. Now your baby's gonna be ugly. I wish I weren't such a crybaby. This one's private. Who do you think you are spying on other people's wishes? <laughs> Wish. Come on, our quest for storm pieces is important. Everyone's counting on us. We gotta hurry. Sorry about that. It's just that I'm embarrassed about my wish. I'm gonna read it again. Mallow's a crybaby. Mallow's a crybaby. Rub it in. Ah! <laughs> I'm so evil. A large spooky enemy called Mastodoom attacks me, but luckily it goes down quickly. I proceed through another star door and clear more enemies then find even more wishes. Another wish asks for Mallow to come home safely, and he immediately realizes that it's from his parents. He swallows his tears, then seems even more motivated to finish our journey quickly. Another path opens after I interact with all the star flowers, so I head through to reach the next area. Here, I find a wish from Luigi. He wants to help me out. I mean, why don't you start by joining my party, man? Where are you? The next star piece is just sitting here on the ground without an enemy guarding it, so I happily pick it up. The group discusses where to go next, until Peach suggests asking around in Seaside Town, which happens to be nearby. You sure you don't want to go back to Grandpa Frog? He might tell us that the next star piece is at Star Hill 2. I reach Seaside Town and head to the inn first. A suspiciously blue-looking toad greets me, then proceeds to stare at me during my sleep. The other toads don't seem much better. I find some of them standing on counters or staring at random objects. Although the shopkeeper and his customers are strangely moving up and down, I can shop for some items. 
Some other toad tells me about his sunken pirate ship and a pirate called Jonathan Jones who lives there. Apparently, there's also a star that fell there, so I'll have to find a way to reach the ocean. I meet with the village elder, and he asks me to get the star from the ocean for him. In his other room, I find a frog who says we met him at the pond when he was still a tadpole. He lets me trade some frog coins for accessories, and I buy an EXP booster, which I equip right away. More blue toads guard a suspicious building, and there doesn't seem to be a way inside. Instead, I head south towards the sea and enter a cave where I find another vendor. He mentions that the pirate ship was sunk by a giant squid. From here, I choose the lower path and get attacked by a sea star enemy called Zeo Star and a jellyfish enemy called Luko. I never thought I would see, ow, a starfish shake its hips. That kind of looked sensual somehow. This also gives me an opportunity to try out Bowser's new weapon, which lets him throw me at enemies. <laughs> Deeper in the cave, I reach an area with water, then Bowser levels up and learns a poisoning attack. I jump into a whirlpool which sucks me down to reach the seafloor. From here, I leave the cave and reach the ocean where bloopers, green cheep cheeps, and a robocrab called Krusty attack me. After clearing a bunch of enemies for me, Mallow levels up and finally learns an ice element attack. I enter the ship and read a page of the ship's travel log which mentions how the giant squid attacked the ship. The enemies in the ship are all spooky ghosts like the shy guy like Reaper, Reacher, and Strawhead. The Strawhead poisons Gina with their stench, but I switch in Peach and Bowser to quickly deal with them by using a triple attack. I read another part of the travel log and learn about a door which requires me to figure out a password to get through with six hints. Below deck, there are a couple of rooms to explore. The first one has a paratrooper and I need him to drop a cannonball on a floating green switch. Once I solve that puzzle, some items drop with the first hint to the password. The adjacent room has a bunch of moving springs and I have to align them perfectly for the cannonball to bounce all the way to the switch. Another hint drops, but instead of the next letter, it tells me that it is found on the bed of the ocean. The third room requires me to go through a maze, and at its end, I get a hint from the second expedition team stating that the password is two vowels. The first one of the lower rooms requires me to follow a coin chain. After collecting all the coins, I get the next actual hint, claiming that it is pretty valuable. The next room has a couple of cannons, and hitting the cannibals drops the next hint, saying that it is actually a they. The last room has two green switches, but they don't seem to do much. It's time to enter the password, and I guess that they might be pearls. A squid tentacle appears to let me know that the password is correct, and the door opens for me. I take the cellar door and reach a room with a bunch of the tentacles poking through the floor. Getting rid of them only makes new ones appear, but I slowly make my way through until I reach a massive calamari that squeezes itself out of a jar. I initiate the fight with fireballs in our triple attack, ending the battle after just a few moves. Wow, well, uh, that was quick. Oh, his tentacle's still alive, I think. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> I jump through the hole in the floor and explore the paths that I can take from there. I clear a bunch of rats sitting on cannons, then move to the next area, which has a bunch of boxes and treasures. Double shiny, baby. From there, I move to an even lower deck and jump over a wall of boxes. The treasure there turns out to be a mimic, which isn't much of a challenge for us anymore. The door leads to a sunken part of the ship, and I use the whirlpools to get down. After taking out more Mr. Kippers and Zeo stars, I explore the depths of the sunken ship. I climb an another set of barrels and reach the surface again. Just as I reach the next part of the ship, a bunch of shark pirates are there. Arr, what's going on here? Who are you? What? You're looking for a star? I'll let you see stars. Arr, arr. Anyway, you're out of luck. You see, whatever falls into the sea becomes Johnny's property. Got that, matey? Oh, and one last thing. Read my lips. We ain't letting you through. Got it. I beat them up, then they run away. Arr, you're stronger than you look. Better warn the upper deck. Come on, mates. Here, this is on us. Jump, jump. Or crouch, that's worse too. What the? How dare you dodge the bear? <laughs> How dare you dodge our attack? I chase them into the next room, then, after a quick fight, they decide to let me through to see Johnny. The pirate boss greets me confidently, and another tough battle begins. His minions go down quickly to a Genoblast. He changes his color to red, then challenges me to a duel. With my allies cheering me on, I quickly do lots of damage to Johnny, and the battle ends with him handing over the star. I jump onto a spring to exit the ship, then head back to Seaside Town. The Elder is already waiting for me there with this creepy bunch of toads. He reveals that he's actually Spiritovich from Smithy's gang, and demands that I hand over the star piece. I Refuse, then one of his minions rushes into a nearby building and tortures the real village elder. Now, isn't it a shame for an innocent old man to be tickled like that? Each time I refuse to give the star piece, Spiritovich sends even more of his minions to torture the elder, making him scream. <coughs> 
Even after the Elder passes out, I keep refusing Spiritovich's demands, but this doesn't help. Eventually, I surrender the start piece, then Spiritovich and his minions head out to catch their ride. I chase them down, and before they can escape to sea, Johnny intervenes to make sure that his gift to me doesn't get stolen. Spiritovich finally takes off his disguise, and the battle begins. I fight him with lightning in our triple attack, but he deals a lot of unblockable damage to the entire group with strong water attacks. Gino gets really low, but eventually Spiritovich goes down, and I can take my star piece back as well as the shed key. Johnny is already gone, but he left me a message congratulating me and telling me that his pirates saw a massive axe in the sky, which is probably another of Smithy's friends. I return to town, then unlock and enter the shed. Inside, the toads thank me for freeing them, but the elder only rewards me with one coin, likely because I allowed him to be tickle tortured to unconsciousness. Peach and Bowser argue for a bit about Spiritovich's methods, then I go explore the town with its real inhabitants. A sniffster shopkeeper sells me a beetle box and explains that I should take it to Booster Hill to catch catch some beetles with it. In the nearby shops, I buy some new weapons for the team. In another building, I find a toad who can identify special mushrooms by taste and will reward me if the mushrooms I feed him are special. I feed him all of my regular mushrooms, but he says none are special and thanks me for the free snacks. Fatty! He ate all my mushrooms. I leave to buy some healing items, then go back to the elder to find out where to go next. He suggests visiting some peaceful monsters in a town at Land's End. Apparently, a mouse visiting from that town mentioned that they have a star there. I then head upstairs to the frog and exchange some frog coins for the coin trick accessory to double my coins earned from battle. Afterwards, I give my EXP booster accessory to Gino since I'm the only one who can wear the coin trick. I leave the town and travel north to reach Land's End. In this rocky area, I use a jar that launches me like a cannon to climb the mountain. After taking the next cannon, I jump into a hole with a bunch of enemies inside. A chow and an enemy with an axe called Shogun attack me, then I encounter an Octavator which resembles the red flying version I fought in the forest. I then carefully aim the cannon at a platform to reach some treasures that are really high up. Another rocky plateau comes up, and stronger versions of the lizard and spider enemies wait for me there. I jump from pillar to pillar until some flying shy guy and a green piranha plant called Chewy attack. Chewy? You ain't chewed on me. From there, I reach a much greener area area with fink flowers and stingers attacking me. Even though they poison me, I manage to deal with them quickly. I try out some new moves and learn that the Geno Flash transforms Geno into a cannon, then deals massive damage to all enemies. Then I try Bowser's Poison Gas, which summons a cloud that poisons enemy groups. Mallow's Star Rain makes a massive star crush the enemies. I use the flowers. I use the... Why? What is that? I use the flowers to reach the top of the plateau, then jump down to find a friendly cloak guide like the sea merchant from earlier. He lets me challenge the sky bridge minigame for a five gold fee. It turns out to be a jumping puzzle and I even dodge bullet bills to reach the end. He dares me to try again to possibly double my winnings and I agree. I easily re- I ease- I e I easily reach the end again and greedily risk my earnings once more to possibly double the reward. This time, however, I fall and lose it all. My monies. Next, I try the special course, and since I learned my lesson, I reject this challenge to possibly double my earnings. But then I do the expert course. Yes, yes, greed, gamble, gamble, bet it all. Yeah, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it now, Mr. Krabs. Double money. Double money. I don't have a gambling problem. I don't have a gambling problem. Yay! Yes! More risk! More double! More money! Yay! Yay! Gamble my life savings away! Yes! 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 After that, I jump down all the way. To my surprise, I land in a desert and talk to a friendly rat. The monster asks me if I'm headed to Monstro Town, then explains that to reach it, I'll have to find a sand world where an ant pops up, then jump inside. I kind of didn't pay attention to anything he said. He said I need to get sucked by an ant, and then I'll end up in the Monster Town. Okay. I head to the next area and pick one of the worlds, then it takes me to another area. My group slowly loses health from enemies that poison me, but I manage to make my way back and then head northwest. Here, I find a strange new enemy who appears to be completely formed. Why is it playing boss music? I try a few attacks, but everything misses. Reading its mind reveals that it's weak to ice and fire and that it has some kind of secret. The fireball makes the monster show its form, which turns out to be some kind of green cloud called gas ox. Now that I can actually hit the gas ox, I quickly finish it off. I jump into the worlds that have the ants inside, and after fighting off the ones that refused the suck, I reach an underground cavern. The place is overrun with familiar enemies, but luckily an invincibility star lets me tear through the bad guys and jump into a pit to reach a lower level. Peach levels up, and learns a new attack. Psych bomb, make me mad and boom. What? She just throws bombs? Wait, is this like a- 
After a few more battles, Bowser also learns his last move called Mecha Koopa Stomp. I discover a new artichoke-like enemy called Criffid, then try out Bowser's new attack, which summons a giant Mecha Koopa to run over the enemies. There is still a ton of enemies left in the room, but a sneaky vendor behind some crates sells me a star for 400 coins. I effortlessly clear the overrun room, and the following cave leads me straight to Balome Temple. I find another vendor who's selling a shortcut to the surface for 100 coins. I agree and jump onto the shortcut spring, but end up in the desert again with no quick way back to the temple. After repeating the long journey back to Balome Temple, I enter the next room and find a couple of dog head decorations on the wall, along with another cloaked guy who offers to tell my fortune for 50 coins. After I pay him, he tells me to hit the three dog heads to receive my fortune. I do so, and indeed some blocks with a scroll on top fall down near me. The fortune reads that if I go down the pipe next door, I'll have a great meal. I jump onto the blocks and enter the next room, then go down a pipe to find a Yoshi cookie in a treasure chest. A Yoshi cookie! They actually gave me a cookie! They were right! That is a great meal. I head through the gate, then collect the treasures and hidden treasures in the next room. There's another one of the blue vendors and a dog head in the following room. He says that I can reach Balome by using the yellow tile, but a scroll that spawns from the dog head says that Balome doesn't want any visitors past his bedtime. I ride the elevator down, but a huge Balome statue blocks the way and asks for a key in order to get to the room full of shinies. I go back to the fortune teller and hit the dog heads in a different order, which gives me another fortune. This time it says that the pipe will lead to things to look forward to, but after going down the pipe, I just find enemies in front of the gate and defeat them in order to proceed. Unfortunately, this still ultimately leads to the same block treasure room. I try another combination and this time it says I'll be very happy about what I'll find. Down the pipe, I find a treasure chest with coins in it. Sadly, the scroll still says that no visitors are accepted. I have to go in and out a couple times until finally the message changes, saying that the writer is very hungry and wants something to eat. I ride the elevator down, but this time I find a room with Balome in it. Mm, you look so tasty. I think I'll just have a snack. No! No, not Yoshi's! No! He puts Mallow to sleep, then I use Gino to boost my attack. I switch out sleeping Mallow for Bowser to fear Balome and lower his stats. I never get this. No, no, no. In fact, after just one slurp, I can clone some. Wait, what? Watch. You all look delicious. But how do you taste? No, not Yoshi's! No, not Yoshi's! I can sour. Ooh, there we are. Excuse me, what? Enraged, I immediately blast him with my triple attack, which quickly finishes him off. Oh no, not again. I'm starving. Time to go home for dinner. Goodbye, boys and girls. What? Okay. Defeating Balom reveals a button that I press to open the gate before entering inside. I find the rat again who tells me that the nearby pipe leads to Monster Town, so I jump inside and start exploring the town. In the first house, I meet an elderly toad named Monster Mama. After I tell her that we're looking for a star, she explains that there's a star upstairs. There is actually a star here, but it's just a dancing sea star monster. I return to Monster Mama and clarify that I need a star piece. She figures that the only place left to look for it is in the sky. To reach the sky, I'll have to use a secret power passage found at Bean Valley. To reach Bean Valley, I'll first have to climb a cliff beyond the desert. To help me out, she calls for paratroopers who immediately rush inside. The paratroopers agree to Monster Mama's request to help me scale the cliff, then rush out to that location. I leave, then visit the room next door to chat with more villagers. A piranha plant here complains about their neighbor talking about crystals all the time. I also talk to a thwomp, then a canine who challenges me to do 30 consecutive super jumps in a row. The room of their neighbor is sealed, so I head to the Goomba shopkeeper who turns out to be Goomhild from Bowser's troops. She presents her kids to Bowser and he wishes her all the best with her shop and the triplets. I buy 10 mushrooms from Goomhild's kids before buying Bowser a spike chain chomp weapon from Goomhild herself. The next room only has a bed with a note left by the three musty fears inviting me to rest. I turn off the light then go to sleep. Suddenly three ghosts appear while I'm asleep and challenge me to a game of find the flag for a prize. The creeper hides his flag behind a wooden flower, the dry bones hides his flag under a green bed, and the boo hides his between O and A. The ghosts disappear then I I wake up and head outside. I check the last room, which seems to be some kind of dojo with a Koopa called Jagger in it. He explains to Bowser that he has been studying here under Master Jinx. Once he's strong enough to beat Smithy, he wants to come back and make Bowser proud. Jagger then challenges me to spar with him, and after trading a few blows, he admits defeat. Once the battle is over, his sensei appears on a bonsai plant in the corner. Jinx is tiny, but gets behind me in the blink of an eye. He challenges me, and I accept. I let Gino buff me, then read Jinx's mind to find out that he has no weaknesses. He deals a 
ton of damage to me with his attacks, but we do a lot of damage to him too. It's not long before he admits that he underestimated me, then asks for a rematch. He hits really hard now, but I practice my super jumps on him for decent damage. Jinx loses again, but still hasn't had enough and asks for a final match. Only this time, he's done playing games and shows his full power. I use a pick-me-up to revive Bowser, then attack with the super jump and actually manage to land a 41-hit combo. Unfortunately, he resists all attempts of Bowser to inflict a status condition and eventually knocks out Gino. I swap Bowser out for Peach to revive Gino, then use her to heal everyone. Jinx one-shots Gino again, so I switch Gino out for Mallow and keep attacking. After just a few more attacks, Jinx finally gives up. He hands his belt over to me and renames the dojo to Mario Style Dojo, even planning to integrate my jump fighting style into his training. He begins his training with Jagger right away by bouncing up and down. I give the Jinx belt to Gino, which gives him a pretty nice stat boost. I go back to the canine to collect my reward for managing to get the 30 consecutive jumps. The prize is an attack scarf, which gives an even better boost to basically all stats, but only I can wear it. When I go back outside, I notice a key that must have fallen. I take it back to Balom's temple and feed the key to the Balom statue and start collecting the shinies. After getting so many new frog coins, I take a quick detour back to the Mushroom Kingdom. I head to Peach's room and find a double for Peach, who turns out to be the Grandma Toad. I then check the guest room. Is that Samus? What? I'm resting up for Mother Brain? What are you doing here? From there, I make my way all the way back to the desert. I travel to the far end of the desert and find a high cliff where the paratroopers start getting into position. I follow the sign that says climb here, then do my best to jump onto the flying paratroopers to climb up. <laughs> Are you really coming here to make fun of me? Don't give up. Sure, it's steady, does it? Now try it again. Oh crap, is this actually gonna be hard? The fact that you have to come down here and talk to me every single time, stop patronizing me! You're making it take longer to try again! I hate you, I hate you, I hate you, I hate you, I hate you. I hate... Why don't you just carry me up there? There's like 50 of you. Just carry me! They call me master at the dojo. I'm the jumping master. No, it was the last one! Stop it! Stop it, just stop. I'm gonna smash your face in. I'm gonna punch your face into this cliff face. Eventually I make it up, but my completion time could be better. I try a few more times for a faster record, but I really struggle to impress the sergeant. Until finally, after a really good attempt, I reach the top in under 11 seconds and I'm rewarded with a Troopa medal. I give it to Mallow for a big boost to his speed. I pass through the gate from here to reach Bean Valley. There are a lot of angry stingers here who attack me and the entire place seems to be built like a pipe maze. I search around until I reach an area with weird looking piranha plants growing out of some more pipes. There's a naughty flying shy guy watering them, which makes them grow to full size. Thankfully, in their grown state, I can actually fight them, then use their pipes to go underground. The first pipe leads to an underground tunnel with chomp chomps along with other enemies inside. Trying the next few pipes leads to slot machine chests that give you something, depending on how you can match the items together. Down the last pipe, I jump into a treasure that turns out to be a stronger mimic called Please No. Thankfully, my 44 combo super jump destroys the Please No before before it even has a chance to attack. I return to the tunnel under the first pipe and discover a secret platform by jumping into it. I jump on top of it and find a secret exit that takes me to a hidden area called Great Guy's Casino. It looks like an abandoned house on a cliff, but when I go inside, two toads in suits block the way. They let me into a small room with the other boss from Booster Tower along with the toad standing behind a card table. Another toad invites me to play prize blocks, which is a slots game where I have to match three pictures on the treasure block. Da, 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 da. Die! You're lucky I can't move. I would smash your face in with the hammer right now, Toad. I give it another try, then manage to match three stars, so the Toad hands over an Energizer as a prize. Now that I've got the hang of it, I align three flowers to win a honey syrup. Next, I check the card table out. After showing me the positions of the cards for a few seconds, the dealer flips the cards, then tells me to choose Gino's card from memory. I easily find Gino's card and the other cards requested, and am rewarded with some battle items. Great Guy then challenges me to a game of Look the Other Way. In this game, all I have to do is look in the opposite direction from where he's pointing. It's pretty much a simplified rock, paper, scissors, so I just keep playing until I get lucky. After winning many times, he gives me a star egg, which I can use in battles without consuming the item. You think you're so hot, but you're not. <laughs> Says you, you're some weird fat-lipped guy in a clown costume on a ball. I go back to Bean Valley to try it out right away. Suddenly, three dancing stars appear and a little bird flies by. Once they finish their little dance, they deal 100 damage to all enemies. I head back to the pipe maze of Bean Valley until an enemy called Smilax blocks my path. At first, it looks like a fairly normal piranha plant, but one of the naughty shy guys waters it with her can, which makes a second head grow. The Smilex puts Gino to sleep with the pollen attack, so I switch Gino out for Bowser. But then the shy guy appears and waters 
Smilax again, making them grow three heads. Can we attack the flying shy guy? It's recycled water. So what does that mean? Rain? Weak to ice, you say? Sucks to be you! Ah! <laughs> 788. How many times can he do this? Attack him! I added some nutrients. Oh, no. Did you put growth hormone in there? This makes a mega Smilex grow, but after a triple move and a finishing blow from Bowser, I easily defeat them. The Bezo shy guy gets a bit worked up about the loss of the plant, then mentions that someone called Queen Valentina has ordered him to keep everyone out of Nimbus Land. He decides to run away before he gets punished, but ends up dropping a note, which turns out to be a seed. I enter the pipe that the Smilex was guarding, and it leads me to a suspicious block. When I jump into it, a massive beanstalk starts growing, and I use it to climb all the way to the sky. I reach a cloud that is guarded by a flying enemy called Birdie and a very thick paratrooper. <laughs> How do you even fit in that shell anymore? How are those tiny wings carrying you? The big guy's ready to launch. You know, clearly that's gonna be something that does a lot of damage, but you know what, big guy? I'll give you a chance. Let's see what he's gonna do. Just when he's about to launch his attack, he unfortunately goes down from splash damage before getting a chance. I climb the vines and grab a frog coin, then run into another chonky troopa. He prepares his attack, so I have my teammates defend. Suddenly, the troopa slowly crash lands onto Gino, dealing a surprisingly low amount of damage. I keep climbing the colorful vines and collect some coins on the way. They lead to different parts of the level, and the first one I try has a couple of moving platforms that I need to use. Landing on them is tricky, but eventually I reach the cloud and find a couple of treasures there. I jump down through some clouds and find two cloud guys. They tell me that I'm at the hot spring but send me away because I'm not royalty. I find a spring that lands me in the town. There are more of the cloud people assembled here near a pair of birdies guarding a door. A lady named Valentina steps out of the building they've been guarding and announces that the king's condition has been getting worse and that they're going to lose him. Unfazed by this, she announces that she's found the missing Prince Mallow and calls for him to show him to the people. After shouting at him, she drags a chubby black bird out and introduces him as Mallow. <laughs> Introducing Prince Mallow. Mallow's not a fat bird! Valentina then pretends that the fake Mallow is asking her to become his queen. The real Mallow is very surprised by the fact that there is a prince with the same name as him, and without giving it another thought, suggests looking for the missing star pieces. In the town's shop, I buy new weapons for the group and a fluffy dress for Peach. I talk to some citizens, and to my surprise, none of them seem to question that Prince Mallow suddenly looks like an oversized bird. I head to the house of an artist called Garo, and he immediately recognizes Mallow, calling him a splendid young prince. This surprises Mallow so much, that he jumps up in the air. I explain Mallow's story to the artist and about how he was adopted by the Frog Sage. After learning who his family is, Mallow immediately rushes to save his parents but fails to get past the guards. The artist seems to have an idea what to do and he gets to work, going from side to side to slowly paint me into a gold statue. Then he delivers me as a fake statue together with the commissioned statue of Queen Valentina. The guards get suspicious about the extra statues and poke me with their spears, but luckily they buy Garo's story about me being Valentina's nephew. We make it inside Nimbus Castle, and immediately Valentina meets with us to inspect yet another statue of her. She asks about the ugly other statue, and Garo tells her a long explanation about his artistic intentions. This convinces her so well that she calls my statue spectacular. She calls her Dodo, and after letting his anger out by pecking one of her statues, he carries both statues to another room, then places us onto pedestals. After the big bird leaves, I get to jump off the pedestal still painted in gold. I head out of the room, and immediately have to hear Valentina's voice again, calling for Dodo. She sends Dodo to polish the statues, and I have to go back on my pedestal or I'll get caught. Here comes the fatty. <laughs> I love how the music stopped. Uh oh. <laughs> the music's stopping. <laughs> The statue was ticklish, is that what you said? If you try stalling just one more time, I'm gonna have your feathers plucked from my pillow. Now scat! This time I succeed, and the big bird runs off so I can progress. After I leave the room, I hear some guards approach. Immediately, I jump onto a pedestal to avoid being spotted, then overhear their conversation. Even the guards seem to hate working for Valentina. They think it's still better than polishing statues, though, and start showing off their polishing techniques. After poking me several times with their spears, I have to jump and lose my gold paint, blowing my cover. They figure I must be a modern, lifelike statue, though, and quickly buzz 
us off. In the next room, some birdies use my own trick against me by disguising themselves as statues before they attack. They dodge a couple of attacks, but eventually I can take them all out. In the next corridor, I fight more of the Shy Guys, the Blue-Coated Shamans, and a Radish with a Fork who spends the entire battle sleeping for some reason. But once I attack him, he wakes up, then starts fighting back. I take the first door in this corridor and find the lower level of a room with a treasure chest and blue birdies together with a chonky troopa. The middle door of the previous corridor is guarded by three of the thick paratroopas, but I handle them just fine. Unfortunately, the door behind is locked. I move on to the third room and clear the enemies before heading to a stairway that leads me down. There are more enemies here to deal with and a radish who blocks the way. After managing to get through, I reach a room with a lot of the cloud people inside. They tell me about a big egg in Valentina's room that can apparently spit eggs which I can ricochet by shielding myself. One of them gives me a flower jar and another one hands over a master key for the castle. I go back through the corridors filled with enemies, but they just loop back to the entrance hall. I go back to the corridor with the three rooms and now open the middle one with the master key. This leads me to a giant purple egg with a shy guy watering it. I hear the egg laugh and then it asks me if I will play with it. I agree and a battle sequence starts. Shelly slowly starts cracking from my attacks. I attack more and more until the egg breaks open and Birdo hatches from it. I quickly read his mind only to find suspiciously flirty thoughts. Someone has to finish me off. I'm glad it'll be you. Wait a minute. Finish you off? I'm glad it's gonna be you finishing me off, heart. Oh, that's so sauce! Then I give him a taste of our Star Rider's triple move, which quickly ends the battle. Birdo then retreats back into his egg, but drops the second castle key for us. I try to pass through the corridor behind the egg, but a fan blows me back to the lower level. Aw, oh, heck you. I get back up, then find a note attached to a room left by Valentina, which says that King Nimbus is resting in bed, so no running is permitted. Mallow is excited that his parents must be behind the door, but the door is locked. Just before Bowser busts the door open, Mallow stops him so they don't disturb his parents' rest. Instead, I follow the flying naughty shy guy who recognizes me. He reports to Valentina that I'm on the way. Then he describes how I look, and slowly Valentina realizes the connection to the suspicious statue she got, though she seems confident that without the key to the king's room, I won't be able to interfere with her plans. After she bickers with Dodo, Mallow and I rush into the room, but Mallow falls over his own feet. I help him up, and Mallow introduces himself as the real prince. Valentina runs away from us with the shy guy and Dodo, but we rush to chase her. I clear the enemies in the corridors behind the throne room, then find an invincibility star to clear out all the blue birdies. Dodo now stands in my way, but after just a fireball and a punch, he's defeated and flies away. Unfortunately, the corridors lead me to a balcony, making me accidentally walk off and fall. I drop through several clouds, somehow managing to fly straight through all the holes. Finally, I land back on the cloud that leads to the hot springs. From here, I make it back to the town and find Valentina there who gets surrounded by the cloud people asking about the king's health and his family. Valentina pushes them away and wants to run, but this time we cut her off. Wait, what the heck she got? Why? She looks so creepy now. She immediately calls Dodo and he charges in to kidnap the real Mallow. Then the two of them enter a duel. Dodo silences Mallow, but even with basic attacks, he easily manages to win, defending his title as prince. Now it's Gino and I against Valentina. After a few attacks, Dodo comes running back to her. Then she scolds him for losing while we get Mallow back. I take out Dodo with a single fireball attack, then end the battle with our triple move. This time, Valentina decides to run away for good, using Dodo to fly her away. Luckily, they also drop the last key, so Mallow can finally meet with his parents again. I let Mallow meet with them alone, then his teary family reunion suddenly makes it rain. Eventually, he returns and asks me in, then introduces me to his parents. King Nimbus and Queen Nimbus seem to be quite happy to meet all of us, with the king even asking us for autographs. The queen then mentions that she saw one of the star pieces fall into the volcano, but the king adds that the place is guarded by the Zard dragon. Queen Nimbus also mentions that we should ask Cinder Toad for help once we get there. We also get invited to enter the Hot Springs, which is the pride of the Nimbus lands. We leave for the Hot Springs, and finally the guards recognize Mallow as the real prince, so I can now enter for a nice hot bath. It also turns out to be the entrance to the volcano area, so I jump off the ledge and land directly in Barrel Volcano. The first enemy I meet here is a rock turtle called Magmus. After defeating it, I jump over some platforms to avoid the lava, then reach a treasure room. I collect the treasures, then accidentally fall 
fall into the lava, launching my burning rear back onto land before lava bubbles attacked me. After winning that fight, I climbed some ledges to reach the next area and get attacked by a red glowing dry bones called Vomer and another one of the chained Donkey Kong enemies. I defeat the chained Kong with some bullets, but the dry bones only goes down to elemental damage, so I take him out with a thunderbolt. I then cross a narrow bridge over the lava and avoid some enemies by jumping over them. Luckily, I find an invincibility star and just breeze through this area, even taking out some kind of big rock enemy without having to fight it. While heading over the next bridge, I find another one of the stone pillar enemies and this time have to fight it. Ugh, seriously? Oh. <laughs> After jumping over some platforms while avoiding lava bubbles, I make my way through a room with bone blocks and even more frog coins for me to collect. Further in, I have to get past armored ant enemies and purple spikies. Next, I reach an area which leads to a room with a couple of treasures. After heading through the little cave, I immediately run into a miniature volcano enemy called Stump It, but take it out before it explodes. I skip most of the enemies here and only clear the massive stone pillars that block the corridor. I quickly make my way through, then climb up a couple of ledges. After reaching the top, I loot a coin chest and find a muscular toad nearby which has to be Cinder Toad. Cinder Toad invites me in and opens up his item shop. I buy some cleansing juice, then he moves to the next counter and acts as an innkeeper too. However, the inn just turns out to be a bunch of crates. While I'm here, I find a shelf carrying models of ships from Nintendo's other games, such as Fox's R-Wing and Captain Falcon's Blue Falcon, then I move to the last counter where he sells me new armor. I travel to the next area and cross a long lava lake by jumping over bone blocks. I make it across the bridge, then check out the next room. Inside, a group of dancing lava bubbles swirls around in front of me. Then, they start fusing together in the lava and form a new shape, the intimidating Zar Dragon. I start the battle with my triple move, then scan the dragon with Mallow, revealing that he's weak to ice. Next, he bites Gino and summons fiery little minions, the Helios. I use the Star Egg to summon my own minions to quickly even the odds, then use Mallow Snowy to push him back where he belongs into the lava. I was about to celebrate when suddenly a new form rises from the lava, the Zombo. I I use my jumping attacks and immediately find a weakness. Scanning him with Mallow reveals that he's also weak to lightning. I use the jumps and Mallow's Thunderbolt to deal massive damage, defeating the Zombo before he can down any of my teammates. I cross the bridge behind the dragon and reach the room with the star piece inside. What? What just happened? No! Give it back! Suddenly, a green and then a yellow axe guy show up, then a pink and finally a black one, all boasting proudly before running away with my precious star piece. I immediately chase after them and find them grouped up on a ledge. They make fun of my mustache, then teleport further away. In a wild goose chase, I climb up the volcano, always just barely missing the Axums. I reach a small room with a spring and see the Axums use it while I keep chase. The Axums and I are now all on top of the active crater, and they seem to be waiting for something called the blade to arrive. They then realize that I've caught up to them, but a flying blade-shaped ship appears out of nowhere, and they jump onto it to get away. I immediately jump onto their ship too, then the battle begins. The Axum Rangers, who seem to be some kind of evil version of the Power Rangers, introduce themselves with mildly impressive choreography. In my first turn, I use the Star Egg to deal a bit of damage to all of the Rangers. They throw bombs at me, but also attack with elements and other projectiles. The pink Axum actually heals them, while the green one uses status effects to mute me. After beating one after another, they announce to their leader, Red, that they're in trouble. But the battle is still not over as they suddenly switch up their formation. Red jumps onto the blade, now controlling the giant robohead. The blade immediately fires its breaker beam, a massive unblockable laser that does lots of damage to all of us. Thankfully, our triple attack quickly destroys it, and I manage to not only beat them, but also take down their whole ship. I now take my stolen red star piece back, adding it to my collection. After getting out of the volcano, I go back to Nimbus Land and enter the castle. Mallow immediately rushes to see his parents and tells them the heroic story of how how he managed to take back the star from the Axum Rangers. The king and queen figure that the last star can only be in Bowser's castle, but unfortunately the castle is still out of reach. They then suggest taking the royal bus, and although the king is getting lost in memories of his youth, the queen makes sure it'll get repaired for us. Prince Mallow asks the employee to call the bus, then a Lakitu bus driver appears on a bus-shaped cloud. He says that he can take us to Bowser's castle with no problem, so we get on the cloud to start the journey. Some toads and moles are watching on a cliff as the bus flies towards the castle with the sword still lodged inside, then drops us off at the entrance. Bowser immediately gets nostalgic over the smell of boiling lava as we enter. Before Bowser gets overly excited, I take a quick detour back to Moleville. I go back to the treasure hunting toad and buy a metal plate from him that turns out to be a very powerful frying pan for Peach. In one of the houses, I find a mole who sells me fireworks, then I leave to trade the fireworks with a little mole girl for a shiny stone. I then leave for Monstro Town to find someone who might be interested in the shiny stone. To my surprise, the shiny 
Stone reacts with the seal of the locked house, opening the door and letting me enter. There's an ominous fog inside, and out of nowhere, a pixelated monster appears who introduces himself as Kulex, Dark Knight of Vanda. He explains that he came from a different dimension to fight for someone called Dark Mage. He's curious about my three-dimensional look and challenges me to a fight to learn more about our strange dimension, and I accept. After the first hit, he starts a little speech and pretty much announces that he wants to numb me. Four crystals then appear in front of him for the fire, water, earth, and wind elements respectively. I use my team's best AoE attacks to deal decent damage, but the strong magic attacks that he uses against me do terrifying amounts of damage. Mallow goes down, but I swap him out for Gino to use the Gino Flash. After another massive fire elemental attack, I go down and have to use Peach's comeback to help me get back on my feet. The crystals use a sandstorm to inflict fear on me and Gino, but after my next attack, Gino uses a party cleanse to get rid of it. Gino goes down, so I switch him out for Bowser and try to fear the enemy with Terrorize, but they resist it. The Mecha Koopa Stomp proves to be more effective by simply dealing damage. Despite the massive variety of elemental attacks that are used against us, Peach manages to keep my party's HP up with her group hugs. I have Bowser try out the poison gas, but they resist this status too. After stacking as many ultra jumps as I can, I manage to take out the water crystal and immediately use Bowser's action for a triple move. With the super jump, I manage to destroy the fire crystal. Now I focus all my attacks on the remaining earth crystal, which unfortunately resists my jump attacks. I swap Bowser out for Mallow, then resurrect him with Peach to scan the knight's health. He turns out to be low already, so I push a bit more with my attacks, taking out the earth crystal. Finally, of all things, he gets defeated by Mallow's fists to send him back to the dimension where he belongs. Before he leaves, he acknowledges the power of the third dimension and says that he will treasure the memory of this battle. As a keepsake, he hands over a quartz charm. Once he leaves, the door disappears and I check the description of the quartz charm with it saying that it's a shining source of power. After this intense battle, I relax a bit in Rose Town. While strolling around, I find one of the hidden items from the three musty fears, the creeper flag, behind the town's welcome sign. Next, I check up on the Yoshis and find a chubby baby Yoshi hatched from the pile of eggs. Baby Yoshi! <laughs> ah! <laughs> That's so cute! <laughs> Wait, wait, I need to translate. Where's Green Yoshi? Looks like he wants some cookies. I want to give him some fine. Give the baby some cookies. Between the O and A of the racetrack's goal line, I find the Boo flag, then go back to my house and look under the green bed to find the Dry Bones flag. I return to Monstro Town and sleep in the cozy bed to meet the Musty Fears again. They congratulate me, then give me their grand prize. I figure out that it's the ghost metal accessory that they've somehow already made me wear, doubling my defense. I make it back to Yoster Isle and start betting on Yoshi to win the race against Boshi. He wins, then I team up with Yoshi and wager all my cookies. By sticking to the rhythm, I manage to win again and keep doing so until I multiply my cookies enough to have a pile of 30 to feed the baby Yoshi. <laughs> I need to translate. I'm dying for some cookies. Bro, I think you've had enough cookies. You should do some racing. Afterwards, I make a quick trip to Booster Tower. I climb all the way up, and to my surprise, find Valentina and Booster there. I overhear Booster proposing to her, and then he whispers something into her ear, which seems to convince her to marry him. The two of them snuggle together on the balcony and don't seem to have more to say. I travel back to Bowser's castle and clear the Koopa guards by using a Yoshi cookie. Nyum the cookie, nyum. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I cross the bridge over the lava lake and quickly deal with some paratroopers to then enter the next room that's almost completely dark. Even though I can't see well, I still find a treasure, then reach the end of the room to enter the next area. There, I get surprised by Croco, who just stands there, and when I talk to Croco, he seems surprisingly friendly. He even offers to sell me some items at fair prices. Once I'm done shopping, I leave for the next room, which has six doors. I learn that two doors lead to action courses, two lead to battle courses, and the last two lead to puzzle courses. I only have to clear four out of the six courses to move ahead, but there's no way of knowing which door leads to which course. I pick the first door, which leads to an action course. There's an invisible path over a lava lake here, but I can see it flash momentarily when the terrapins jump onto it. After a few jumps, I fall into the lava and lose coins, then see that my attempts are limited. With nine tries to go, I move to the next lava lake, which requires me to jump over moving platforms this time. Trying to collect all treasures costs me a couple more lives, making me reach the third room with only seven tries left. 
Here, I have to climb ledges while dodging some barrels thrown by a Donkey Kong enemy. Once I reach him, he escapes and leads me to a treasure room which has a weapon for Peach, the Super Slap. Leaving this area brings me back to the room with six doors. I now pick room two and learn that it's a puzzle room with a hammer bro inside who challenges me to a game. He explains that we'll take turns taking up to four coins out of the treasure box. The game ends when 21 coins are taken and the one who takes the last coin loses. I set him up to lose by taking the 20th coin, then move on to the next puzzle. This one has a lot of switches and jumping on them will reverse the surrounding buttons. My goal is for every switch to be pressed down. I start with the corners and slowly work towards evening out the buttons that keep popping up. After a while, I get the hang of it and make it through. The third puzzle requires me to kick around a bunch of balls to launch them over each other and disappear the lower ball until there's only one ball left. With this puzzle, it's easiest to just try and see what happens, so I smack the balls for a while. Unfortunately, I eventually launch the wrong ball and get myself stuck because there's no way to bounce another ball anymore and have to start over from the very first puzzle. I retry the puzzle rooms and this time try to think ahead while bouncing the balls, earning me an easy win. I'm rewarded with rock candy, then return to the six doors again to enter door three. This one's a battle room. A magic Koopa appears in a corridor, summoning several groups of enemies for me to defeat. This challenge seems pretty easy though, so I clear all the groups without much trouble. My reward for this is the Drill Claw, a new weapon for Bowser. The fourth room is another battle room and the Magic Koopa once again challenges me by summoning enemies in my path. Eventually I make it to the end again and get a star gun for Gino as a reward. I leave the treasure room and step out the door, but the next room has no floor. After a short fall, I pass through the door, then Bowser and I get stopped by Wizard Koopa who now seems to serve Smithy. He even fights me, but immediately gets a taste of Gino's new weapon. After a few attacks, Wizard Koopa casts a heavy hitting water attack. Unfortunately for him, he doesn't get to try another spell as we finish him off in the next turn. After the battle, Wizard Koopa seems to come to his senses as his color changes back to blue. He admits that he was probably brainwashed and doesn't seem to understand what happened. He then uses his magic to help us by summoning a treasure chest containing infinite coins. Excuse me, what? Is this like Mushroom Kingdom inflation? You could just casually make an infinite money box. Next, I check out the left room and run into Croco again. He seems pretty nice at this point and sells me a bunch of strong armors for my whole team. The right room actually leads deeper into the castle, but to get through, I have to cross a bridge to get over a lava lake. Some angry thwoms try to squish me though, which makes it a lot harder. Finally, after reaching the end, I make it back to the same chandelier room where I fought Bowser in the very beginning. I don't see anyone here, but suddenly I hear laughter. It seems Smithy has replaced the chain chomps with shy guys to hold the chandeliers, and a machine samurai is standing on top of one. I jump to reach the other chandelier, and the battle against Boomer begins. During the first turn, I deal good damage with some jumps and boost myself with Gino's buff. I also scan Boomer, but he has no weakness to exploit. He attacks me with the samurai sword, dealing little damage. Then I attack, dealing massive damage by stacking a lot of super jumps, quickly ending the fight in my favor. Boomer starts coughing, but doesn't want my sympathy. He tells the shy guy to let go and goes down on his own terms, together with the chandelier. The other shy guy offers to help, then pulls the chandelier towards the roof while the group dances. After a wild ride, we reach the top of the tower, now facing the massive sword Exor. At the beginning of the fight, I learned that his eyes are protecting him, but there's also the mouth and the handle to target with attacks. I start attacking the eyes, which makes its pupil spin and removes the protection. He then attacks me with a flare, which deals a lot of damage. I target the other eye, then bring out Peach to heal us from the damage. Next, he attacks me with a flame ball, which luckily misses most of us. Afterwards, I attack the handle for decent damage and have Peach smack the mouth with her frying pan. I keep alternating between attacks to the handle and his mouth, which makes his jaw drop. This leaves him vulnerable, so I target his handle with Gino Whirl, dealing maximum damage. But suddenly, a strange light emerges from his mouth and sucks me and my party right inside. We find ourselves falling through some kind of swirling tunnel until we land on a platform floating in some kind of dark fog. Gino explains that Exor is what connects our world with Smithy's world and that we'll find Smithy if we head down this road. However, with Exor defeated, Bowser insists on going back to his castle instead to start rebuilding it. He even commands me as his minion to help with the repairs. Luckily, Gino brings up a good point by explaining that the castle is still the entrance point and if Smithy isn't stopped, new weapons will keep passing through there. Bowser rethinks his plans in order to save his privacy. In Weapon World, I really struggle to jump across a bolt gap until I realize that I'm supposed to rotate the nut across the bolt with my jumps. From here, I reach an area with several platforms that are also connected with nuts and bolts, along with blue amoeboids on them that attack me. They inflict the fear status on Mallow and even turn out to be resistant to my jumps. Luckily, Gino's attacks deal good damage. I then head all the way north, and while 
while balancing on a nut, I get attacked by Glum Reapers and Doppels. Since they're ghosts, they're all immune to my jumps and use the fear status to their advantage. I beat them by using my other attacks, then leave this area through an exit to the east. This platform has a green switch, but several amoeboids flood that corner and block my path to the switch. I defeat the obstructing amoeboids, then press the switch, revealing a path to go further east. Here, I find a hidden treasure and a spring that leads me onto another bolt, and after a few precise jumps, I can reach this area's end. But then I jump down and land in front of a huge clock, which seems to be quite alarmed to see me. It attacks me, and I have to choose to either target its alarm bells or the countdown underneath. I decide to focus the ring dings first. They attack me with a dark star, and then the clock announces that it's time for an ice storm. I manage to defeat the first bell, but the clock's strong attacks eventually knock Mallow out. The clock's handles keep moving, and now it says it's time to heal itself. The heal doesn't help much, though, because I use my super jump to destroy the other bell while Gino uses a pick-me-up to revive Mallow. After a thunderbolt from Mallow and a super jump from me, the countdown breaks too, and the battle is won. Now a spring appears, which leads me down. The enemies here are gray, unpainted versions of the Axums that I fought before. They're called Machine Made, and just like the Axum, they throw bombs, but also go down pretty quickly. They seem to get dropped endlessly onto the conveyor belt above me, but once I get past them, I claim a treasure. To make it over the next gap, I have to ride moving gray platforms, but on my first attempt, I fall. I'm glad I fell, though, because I end up finding some items down here. On my second attempt, I make it over the gap and proceed to the next area. More conveyor belts wait for me here, which seem to supply new machine enemies called Pounder, Poundette, and Jabbit. I scan them with Mallow, then take them out one by one. The last conveyor belt has a big machine-made enemy, which looks like one of the bosses we fought before, Clay Morton, along with unfinished-looking Pogo Stick Shy Guys. Despite the enemy's size, I easily defeat them. I reach a staircase of conveyor belts, and while climbing up, I get attacked by a machine made which looks like the Bowyer boss from before. Using a triple move and a few attacks, I end the fight quickly. I then get attacked by a new type of enemy called Ninja. He's not very hard either, but then an enemy gets dropped right in front of me. It turns out to be a gray version of Spiritovich. He attacks me with a meteor blast dealing little damage, then gets defeated on turn two. I jump down into the hole and immediately see two new enemies who claim I've taken their bait, Cloaker and Domino. Domino weakens Mallow with fear, then Cloaker quickly gets defeated before really doing anything. Domino isn't done though and retreats towards the back of the room where a large mechanical snake is waiting for him. He jumps on top of the Mad Adder and attacks the group with a massive bubble that puts Gino to sleep. I try to terrorize them with Bowser, but unfortunately they resist the fear status. I use my jumps and party members' attacks to chip away at their health. The duo keeps attacking and even drops massive boulders on us, but after a few more turns, even this enemy has to admit defeat. From the boss room, we go up and discover a production line where a lot of the weapon enemies are being assembled. The clerk announces that with the current production rate, Smithy will have a new army in no time. This gets Mallow angry and he confronts the clerk, even telling him to stop the production. The clerk commands the hammers to attack us, but they're no threat at all. Then the clerk himself attacks us, but a single super jump combo is enough to take him out. Mallow discovers a switch behind the boss and is quick to step onto it. Suddenly, a mechanical claw reaches down for Mallow, but he doesn't notice it like I do and mistakes my shocked look for a prank. Then he gets grabbed by the claw, but with the jump, I can free him. I want to proceed, but out of nowhere, a toad appears. Peach apologizes for sneaking out of the castle like that, but the little toad doesn't mind and actually wants to help us. He sells me some healing items and gives me free rock candy. I move further up the production line where the enemies get painted, and there's yet another villain, the manager, together with some pounders. Bowser tries to intimidate them, but they completely ignore Bowser and focus on me instead, starting a battle. After this not-so-tough battle, Bowser gets sentimental and recites a haiku. <laughs> pat, pat. Um, well, <laughs> he just poofed out of shame. We continue up the production line, now reaching the area where the weapons get hammered into shape. Peach approaches the director and politely asks him to stop. The director only gets angry, though, so she hides behind me while shaking, but says that she isn't scared. The director is definitely tougher than the other supervisors and even buffs himself throughout the battle. He still gets defeated quickly, and Peach seems determined to finish the job now. We go further and finally seem to reach the end of the production line. There's a smelting oven here where the weapons are being casted, and the factory chief is standing in front of it. He seems surprised that I got past all the enemies, but doesn't hesitate to attack me together with the oven gun yolk. The lava actually starts moving and reaches out of the smeltery to attack me. I jump on the chief, and he goes down before doing anything significant. The gun yolk, however, fires a massive laser, damaging the entire group. I bounce on it for a while until it breaks, and the fight ends. Gino then explains to me that this is the heart of the factory, and that we must defeat Smithy. I hit the switch, and a mechanical claw comes down for me to grab onto. It lifts me up, then drops me into one of the pipes that leads below. 
below. In front of a steady lava stream, I see a giant bearded guy with a crown hammering away at the lava to create the living weapons. Mallow recognizes the last star piece on his chest. He demonstrates his power to create weapons, then Gino interrupts him and tells him to stop this madness. Smithy shrugs it off, then Bowser jumps in to demand his castle back. Smithy actually seems to like it here though, so Peach chimes in and begs him to reconsider. Instead of doing so, he tells me to hand over our stars to make him even more powerful and to fill the entire world with weapons. The final boss battle starts and I decide to attack the smelter first. Mallow scans Smithy, then the boss pounds us with a massive hammer. I have Gino boost himself up, then bring in Peach to replace Mallow. The smelter spits out some lava, which Smithy quickly hammers to forge an enemy. Luckily, I managed to defeat the smelter, ending his endless enemy production. He keeps smacking us with his hammer, but I outheal his damage with Peach's group hug. Now I funnel all the damage into Smithy until he starts raging and smashes the hammer onto the ground a couple of times. Calm down, Smithy. Your head looks like a guy's <laughs> Don't get so worked up. Think of your blood pressure. Do you even have blood pressure or metal? We just built this yesterday. The foundation's very weak. So stop shaking the floor. He doesn't listen though and instead hammers the floor again, breaking the entire structure and making us all fall into the depths of the factory. We land in a room with several creepy smithy heads surrounding us and Smithy himself seems angrier than ever. He decides to show us his real form and turns into a derpy looking version of himself. Come on, you beauty <laughs> You just look even more derpy! You got little Google eyes! I first bounce on his chest before applying Gino's buffs again. Suddenly, Smithy starts hammering at his derpy head, turning it into a tank. I scan the tank with Mallow and figure out that he's weak to lightning. I jump on the tank, then exploit its weakness with Mallow's shocker. Smithy deals decent damage with some projectiles, but my large super jump combos melt his health pull quickly. I switch Gino for Peach and heal the party back up to keep our HP high so we can keep attacking. Eventually, he forges his head back to normal, then forges it into some kind of chest. I try attacking with lightning again, but now, his weakness changed. He poisons me and Mallow with an attack from inside the chest, so I give Mallow a break and switch him out for Gino. However, Smithy keeps forging his head and now turns it into some kind of ghost. He then attacks us with boulders, which Peach can easily outheal. I try to guess his weakness next and use a fireball, but he completely resists it. Despite his massive attacks, we push through and eventually try a triple move. This deals crazy damage, and although Smithy can't believe it, he realizes he's lost as his body explodes. This leaves the final star on the ground and I grab it to complete our collection. Gino thanks the group and explains that Star Road is now saved. With Gino's mission complete, he turns to face each of us before releasing his inner light and leaving the puppet behind as his true self swirls around us. By combining the stars together, Star Road regains its shape, then the massive sword evaporates into dust. I'm happy to see the young Toad playing with his Gino doll again and Croco losing a race against Yoshi at Yoster Island. At least Valentina seems to have found the love of her life with her getting married to Booster while having Dodo as the priest. The cloud people seem so happy Happy to have Mallow back while Bowser and his minions are busy repairing their castle. Everyone's here. What? What's Balom doing here? He numbed me! He doesn't belong here! Get out of here, Balom! Yeah, thank you. Well, thank you, but no thank you for putting Balom in the ending screen. Suddenly, I wake up in my house, then Toad rushes inside to explain that defeating Smithy was all just a dream. Everything's back to the way it was, but Toad gifts me a stay voucher for a Mary Moore Hotel. Before I go there, I make a quick detour to Land's End and enter a cave to collect the final secret treasure chest. With that done, I travel back to Monstro Town and talk to the mimic who lives there to hear how impressed he is that we found all the hidden treasures. Wow, he found all the hidden treasures. That's it? He just tells you wow? For all my hard work, I get a wow! From there, I finally travel to Marymore and use the gifted stay voucher to stay at the suite for free. I tip the bellhop, then hit the showers and go to sleep. In the middle of the night, I see Gino standing by the window. The next morning, he says he saw a bright light somewhere at Star Hill and asks to check it out. I travel there and wonder if something here has changed. After heading to the next area, Gino looks around but does doesn't find anything suspicious. We go in deeper, then Gino discovers a few new stars on the ground, which probably are new fallen wishes. I listen to the new wishes, then head back to Tadpole Pond to talk to the Frog Sage. For some reason, all he mentions is that Balom is back to his old tricks again. For that, I travel back to Monstro Town and enter Balom Temple from the town side. I see Balom hanging out there, and Bowser wonders why he still hasn't learned his lesson. Balom seems angry about his scratchy throat, but Bowser and Mallow are determined to beat him, even though he looks stronger than before. The fight goes smoothly as I deal decent damage with my jumps. Then I bring in Peach to outheal any damage below my deal. Unfortunately, he swallows her right away and makes a clone of her. She gives him a shield, and now I have to 
endure getting smacked by Peach's pan. After I quickly defeat the Peach clone, Balone puts Gino to sleep, then numbs me and makes a clone of me. My clone turns out to be immune to jumping attacks, but not to Gino's gun or Peach's pan. Before Balone can make another clone, I quickly use my triple move, but it's not enough to end the fight. Balone immediately swallows Mallow, then makes a Mallow clone who immediately defeats the real Mallow. I quickly eliminate the Mallow clone before it can cause more harm. At this point, Balone takes much less damage because of all the shields that the clones gave him. Luckily, it doesn't take much more to win, and by defeating him, we somehow even cure his scratchy throat. After the battle, Mallow finds something on the ground that Balome spat up and was probably the reason for his scratchy throat. He recognizes the stick from his grandpa, and Bowser suggests to use it as his weapon. I give him the Sage Stick, which improves not only his attack, but also his magic attack. Since these boss rematches seem to be quite difficult, I head back to Mushroom Way to practice my jumps for a 100 super jump combo. I choose Spikies as my target because they take no damage, so they don't flinch or create distracting visual effects when I bounce off of them. After several failed attempts, it looks like I'm finally about to succeed, but fail on jump number 96. That almost broke me, but I didn't give up, and after a few more attempts, I finally land a 100 jump combo. Yes! Finally! Yes! Victorious, I head to Monstro Town to visit the canine and tell him about my new super jump record. He admits that I nailed the challenge and rewards me with the super suit. The suit is awesome, increasing all of my stats across the board. Then, I make a journey back to Tadpole Pond to visit the Frog Sage and ask him about the next super boss. He mentions an expert bomb maker, which makes me think of Punchinello. I check out the mines, and at the very end, I find him. Bowser approaches Punchinello to boast about his reputation, then the battle begins. I try to damage him with jump attacks, but he resists it. After the first turn, Punchinello launches four bomb bombs at me. I attack them all with Peach's Psych Bomb, but the boss takes very little damage, showing me just how high his defense is in this fight. I switch Gino out for Mallow to zap all the bomb bombs. Unfortunately, the bomb bombs survive and start bomb rushing us immediately one-shotting Peach and Mallow with their explosions. I then use a pick-me-up to revive Peach, but despite my efforts, it gets really hard to constantly recover from the bomb bomb one-shots. I have no choice but to take out the bomb bombs as quickly as possible. After attacking with Ultra Fireball, I suddenly notice that the bomb bombs can be turned around to make them target their master instead. Despite all of that, he manages to one-shot Peach, Gino, and me, which only leaves me with Bowser and Mallow. Mallow revives me with a pick-me-up, and with a final attempt, we try to direct as many bomb bombs against him as possible. With him taking all of that damage, he then pulls out his biggest bomb bomb ever. Thankfully, it turns against him and blows him up for good. Punchinello admits defeat, but at least offers to upgrade Bowser's chain chomp before he leaves, turning it into solid gold. Bowser immediately tries out his new toy, the Wonder Chomp, then recruits Punchinello to fix his castle. I leave the area, then head back to Rose Town to buy some pick-me-ups. With that done, I head back to the Frog Sage to learn about my next target. He mentions Booster, so back to Booster Tower it is. I find him playing with his dolls and puppet train. He shows off his new train engine, 023, then Peach and Gino immediately start complimenting him. When Gino speaks, Booster gets really excited about seeing a talking doll. Then he asks if we want to play with him in his new train. I agree, which initiates the battle. The fight starts with Booster working on something, but attacking him breaks his concentration. The Snipsters motivate him, which makes him work even faster. Despite that, I still focus my attacks on him to interrupt his work and avoid whatever he's trying to build. To try and get rid of the Snipsters as soon as possible, I use a triple move doing a lot of damage to the enemy group. With a massive series of jumps, I don't only interrupt Booster, but also end the battle. Although he didn't get to show off his work, Booster seems to have enjoyed the game. He starts crying, but claims it's tears of happiness. As a gift, Booster hands over the Stella 023, a new weapon for Gino. Peach and Gino are grateful, then Gino even starts explaining why he can speak. I don't have time for your excuses. In fact, you should be leaving now. Get lost. <laughs> Holy crap, just belly slammed me out of the room. I leave Booster Tower and head back to the Tadpole Pond to get a new hint from the Frog Sage. This time, he tells me about a celebration in Marymore. I travel there right away and enter the cathedral. Indeed, I find the wedding cake and the two cooks sleeping there. Mallow and Peach chime in to talk about the cake and wonder if it'll attack again. At that point, the chefs wake up, presenting the most delicious cake they ever baked. The apprentice mentions that the cake is moving again, so the chefs ask us to batter the cake into submission again. What was he thinking? We forgot to light the candle on the cake. Don't do it! Yeah, maybe it'll seem less weird if we light those candles. It is worth a try. <laughs> Bad things will happen if all the candles are lit. Finish the fight before that happens. Oh. Bro, stop. Bro! You've already lit three! 
I try to jump on the cake to put them out, but it doesn't do anything. Next, I try to take them out with Mallow's snowy attack, but the cake is completely immune to ice, so the candles stay lit. Now that it's the chef's turn, they light the remaining candles and the cake prepares a massive laser. It takes all of us out in a single attack, so Bowser and Peach have to take Mallow and Gino's place. I try to terrorize the enemies with Bowser, but they resist the fear status. After Peach uses comeback to revive me, I jump onto the cake again, but this just deals damage without putting out any candles. The cake then fires yet another celebration shot, one-shotting the only party members left, which leads to my first game over. I repeat the battle and again have to start with three candles lit. With a sandstorm and a diamond saw, the cake almost takes out Gino, but this time I learned that I could put the candles out with basic attacks. Now some back and forth between me and the chefs begins with them trying to light the candles while I'm trying to blow them out. Meanwhile, the cake keeps attacking with strong magic attacks and knocks Gino out. I bring him back with Peach, then attack, but Gino gets turned into a mushroom. The cake is trying really hard to stop us from using basic attacks to prevent us from putting out its candles, but eventually the cake is defeated. The chefs congratulate me for putting the cake in its place and reward me with an enduring brooch, which prevents a KO once per battle. I return to Tadpole Pond to learn my next hint. This time he points out the pirate, so I return to the sunken ship. Once I make it to Johnny's room, he seems happy to see me again, but since our last duel, he's been aching for a rematch. Although this time, he adds a rule to not use any items. I choose Bowser and Gino to cheer me on for passive stat bonuses. The fight begins, and I try to land as many super jumps as possible, but it doesn't do much damage. His diamond saw, however, hits me hard. I try a basic attack instead, and he retaliates with his fire saber. We trade blows until he starts buffing his vigor. I slowly get better at blocking his saber, but my attacks do less and less damage as he keeps boosting his defenses. I take him down, though, and as a prize for my victory, he hands over an extra shiny stone. No! I think I know what that is. I travel back to Tadpole Pond, and to my surprise, the sage suggests visiting the dojo again. Indeed, I find my students there training hard. Jinx asks us to show them our triple moves to help them with their training, so I immediately agree to spar. To learn all about the triple moves, Jinx resets my gauge to 0%. I start refilling my gauge by attacking, but Jinx isn't messing around and attacks me with a Hadouken-like attack, almost one-shotting me. Peach heals me for most of the damage, then tries to silence Jinx, but he resists it. I swap Bowser for Gino and start buffing the team. Afterwards, all I can do is keep attacking to charge the triple move gauge while occasionally healing with Peach. Since my gear prevents his one-shot attacks, he can't actually do much to stop me from charging the triple move gauge all the way to 100%. After reaching that goal, I use a triple move which satisfies Jinx and ends the battle. As a reward, he gives me the treasure of the dojo, a teamwork band which speeds up the triple move gauge's buildup. Alright, pretty good. Let's see who's next. Ah, I think I know who's next. <laughs> Crap. Since I already know who's next, I use the extra shiny stone to open the door. After Mallow wonders if Kulex has returned, I can hear his voice again, now announcing that he has found even greater power thanks to his own wish coming true. This time, he challenges us in full 3D. He starts the battle strong by reducing my entire party's HP to one with an unblockable meteor. I target the wind crystal first with a super jump because it has the least health and is weak to jumps. Then I have Gino use a Croca Cola to heal us back to full HP. The crystals attack with power Powerful magic and transform Gino into a mushroom. With Peach's group hug, I bring everyone back to full HP, but then Kulex starts counting down. Four, no, 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 don't you do that. Don't do that, don't count. Counting is really bad in a Final Fantasy game. You do not let Final Fantasy characters do math. That's bad. I'm not sure what he's planning, but I use Gino to buff myself. To my surprise, Kulex can even block buttons just like Bowyer and locks my Y button. With a basic attack, I strike the wind crystal one more time and defeat it, but as it breaks, it casts a nimble force buff on their entire group. Now Kulix's counter drops to three and he uses his shredder move to remove all my buffs. Next, I target the water crystal with fireballs exploiting its fire weakness. I use mushrooms to keep Gino alive while fireballing, but now the counter drops to one. I heal one more time, then activate our triple move to use Peach's umbrella for protection to hopefully allow us to survive whatever move Kulix is preparing. With the counter now at zero, Kulix drops another meteor, but with the shield, we block the entire attack. I reapply a buff to myself, but now Kulex locks my A button. I can still use a fireball though, breaking the water crystal which buffs the enemies with magic force. Kulex's counter goes back to four and I swap out Gino for Mallow to use a snowy special to exploit the fire crystal's weakness and deal a lot of damage. The enemies focus their attacks on Mallow, but I heal him up with items. 
points. The counter drops to three, and I attack with another Snowy before refilling my flower points with a Royal Syrup. I use basic attacks to keep targeting the elemental crystals, but now the counter drops to two. I use Geno Boost above, then keep healing with Peach and basic attacking. The counter drops to one, then after a few attacks, reaches zero and a devastating Meteor drops. Since Geno wasn't at full HP, the Meteor downs him while the rest of us survive with one HP. I swap Geno out for Mallow, who then uses a Croca-Cola to fully heal us up. With the counter back at four, Peach gets Geno back up, and when the counter drops to three again, Geno manages to break the fire crystal, which applies a Vigor Force buff to the enemies. Last is the Earth Crystal, so I use basic attacks from Geno and myself to slowly wear it down. Thankfully, Peach manages to squeeze in a group hug before the next meteor, so we all survive it. After a few more attacks, the last crystal breaks, giving Kulex one last buff called Valor Force. I now target Kulex with basic attacks, and thanks to another triple move, I'm able to shield just in time to block the next countdown attack, which changed from Meteor to Final Claw. I try to deal as much damage as possible before he counts down to another Final Claw. Unfortunately, this time I don't have the triple move ready and the counter drops to zero. He attacks with another Final Claw, but miraculously, I managed to perfectly block it and survive one more time. After a few more attacks, I finally defeat Kulex even in his 3D form. Got him! Bravo! He's first try! 